Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to see such a great turnout for today's topic, Your House or Mine, all about real estate. And just before I introduce our speaker for today, I wanted to remind you of a few, a few, I guess, housekeeping points. Number one is, please mute or turn off your phone. Don't be like me, the only person whose phone went off the first night. Partly because I didn't know how to turn it off, but now I've come to church and I've learned how to turn my phone off. What does that say about me? I never turn it off. Anyway, that's number one. Number two, and you may have noticed the sign when you came in, these presentations are being videotaped. And um, so if you have any objections or problems with that, judge yourself accordingly, you know, just so you know. But the good thing about them being videotaped is if you have a friend or you want to review something you didn't quite catch, you can catch it on the Cost Allegrity Community Church YouTube channel, which is at the bottom of the website. Click here. Um, the third thing that I have here is that we have a mic set up at the back, just the one. So if you're going to be asking a question, and Manny is going to uh, devote some time in his presentation to just that, please make sure you go to the mic uh, to speak so that everyone can hear your very important question and important answers. Thank you. And the last item is, I understand that a free will offering is left at the door on the way out, and um, the, the donation typically goes between the speaker and half goes to the speaker and half is intended for the community service fund which assists needy people in the local communities. Um, Manny has graciously um, offered his part of the donation will go to the church. So thank you. Thank you all for that. It's, um, it's helping people and today Manny's going to be helping you if you're thinking to rent or to buy in this area. So I'm going to call uh, Manny up this way and uh, it's really my pleasure to introduce Manny because I've known him uh, casually. No, that doesn't sound quite right. But in an, uh, no, in an informal setting for many years, and only recently discovered some things about him, which I'll share with you. Um, anyway, Manny, welcome. I'm going to refer to my notes, and I said if I get anything that's uh, uh, defamatory, he should correct me. But. Um, Anyway, it's um, Manny is the founder and CEO of um, Grupo Betel Real Estate here in Malaki, and it's conveniently located across from the Thrifty's Ice Cream Shop on Main Street. You'll remember that, right? Um, Manny has been in the real estate business for 18 years. Previously, though, he worked as an accountant, and uh, he puts his accounting skills to good use as a realtor, specifically in areas uh, that relate to title issues and tax matters. Manny has lived in town since he was a boy 30 years ago, and uh, not true. He knows, needless to say, he knows Malachi, San Patricio, Obregon, and the surrounding area very well. Um, he is, I didn't quite get this right, but he is part of two ejidos, uh, San Patricio and Aguacate. And I'm sure today when he's presenting, he'll be uh, telling you a little bit about ejido lands as opposed to other lands. And um, uh, he has a lot of insights to offer. Uh, what else? We got one, one or two more things that are, I think, of interest to you. Uh, that Man and Manny is also the co-founder of the Batel Christian Congregation of Malaki, and um, he welcomes you to drop by his office on the main street across from Thrifty's, or contact him by phone or on his website. He tells me that he gets most of his uh, most of his business uh, uh, through his website, and he's brought some cards along, so you can uh, ask him for his card at the end. Uh, one more time, a big hand. Welcome. Oh, I can feel that weight on my shoulders now. <laughs> that was a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, as I know a lot of people from here, some no faces and some others that I don't know. But uh, uh, those who know me, they know that uh, English is not my natural language. So you will hear some funny pronunciations of you, okay? But you, you, probably you will understand. And uh, I'm thank you to this congregation, to Alex and the pastors and everyone, all the organization, they're doing a wonderful job. 
Thank you very much. And uh, about real estate, I think there is not much really that we can speak about it, except to explain you the nature of the land in Mexico. I'm sure you have lots of questions you have had in here, so many stories, some good ones and a lot of horrible stories about real estate experience that people have been uh, passing through. But uh, I can tell you, everything in real estate can be done correctly if you use the right person to buy. Most of the bad experiences because they don't want to use a realtor, they want to buy directly, and they don't know the rules in here. I'm pretty sure you know all about your country, the place where you're coming from, but uh, in here there's such a quite different between Laos and there and here, and the rules as well. Each state in Mexico has its own particular way to do the things, especially in real estate. So let me explain to you just briefly, very, very fast, how the, the land is in Mexico. We have uh, three different, we can divide it in three separate uh, areas of the land. The first one and the most popular is the Hito, which uh, I believe most of you have questions about it. And a Hito is more like an Indian reservation. Okay? They got their own rules, they got their own uh, organizations, but they are under the Constitution and the federal Mexican laws as well, than any other uh, agrupation. Any other group, any other aggregation. This is the first one, the Hebrew. The second one is uh, private property, which you are familiar with. It. They have title, they got deed, and you know more, more than me about it. And the third one is a federal zone. We have a federal zone in Mexico, which is uh, the restricted zone. That's what the law said. It's a restricted zone, which is from the coast, from the ocean. 50 kilometers inside land and from the border, 100 kilometers inside land. So the law in the Article 27 in our Constitution say that no one can own it, a piece of property in that restricted zone if it's not a Mexican or a Mexican corporation. And that's just the base that uh, we use for the people that can't and they have questions about owning the right. If you go to outland, you can buy a property, you go to Chapala, you can buy a property and put it directly into your name. But in this song, you cannot. So you have to use a different way to own it, through a bank trust or a corporation. So saying that, I will be more than happy to answer your questions. One thing that I would like you to know also is, um, I'm a human, I don't know everything. <laughs> So maybe some questions in here will be not answered, but I can tell you, I will take it with me and I will give you the answers as soon as possible, okay? So you're welcome to shoot me. Just here. Manny, if you can get a little closer to the microphone as Absolutely. well, maybe we can... Yes. <coughs> owns a house and it's in his name he owns the title and he he decides to sell how does that go about with um, you don't take over the title because you're not Mexican like he said you cannot own Mexican land anymore. if it's a uh, private property I mean with title then you have to go with a notary the notary will do the transfer of the price of the property to you, but it has to be done by uh, through a bank trust that we call Fide Comiso. Thank you. You're very good. I have a question for you. I know two people this year that bought homes, furnished. One person, there when they got here, there was absolutely nothing in the house. Another person, there were a couple things in the house. I don't understand the question, really. Two people I know bought homes here. One house was completely empty. Mm -hmm. No stove, no nothing in the house. But at the time that they make the offer... And it was sold furnished. 
It was sold furniture. Yes. Okay. And here you can sue the, the person who is selling if in the agreement that you, the previous agreement of the title, the transfer of the price, and that agreement specifies that the property was sold with the furnitures included. If there is nothing in, in the agreement, then there's nothing to claim. Okay. And another person bought a house furnished and it's partially furnished very sparsely. I see. It's the same the same case. So you uh, say they can ju they just sue the person if, that sold if, it to them. If they have the backup with agreement that the agreement says that the that the house was buying furnished, then you have a case in, in the court that you can sue them. Okay. And make them to, to keep it the the furniture's back. <laughs> She's asking me how long is the trust uh, can be active. Right now it's uh, 15 years. 15 years and after that you can renew it. You can be renewing as many times as you want. Yeah. Yes, hi Manny. Hi. Anyway, um, two questions. A quickie is, uh, do you have listings for land and lots and houses? I have what, I'm sorry? Listings. listings. Yes. Yeah. We could look on the internet? Yes, I will give you my card. That is the web page in there. Good, all right. Uh, second is, uh, the, we were looking at a, a piece of land with uh, the house on it. And uh, it was kind of strange how it was going down. But it turns out that they had, uh, it was once in a hedel land, and there were Mexican people that bought it, that owned it, and they put it, uh, and they bought out the hedel. And now, 10 years later, they're trying to sell it, and they're putting it back into the hedo, and that's the way they wanted to sell it. But for us, buying, I think it's much better to, to buy if you have a, like a federal title. Is that correct? It is correct. Yeah. Why would they do that? Any idea? Uh, no, I have no idea what they did that. Yeah. But let me tell you, if it was, let me see if I understand correctly. The property was a Hedo uh, regiment first. Right. They put it into a title, and they put it back to the Hedo. No, that's what they're in the process of doing because they want to sell it. Well, well, I'm once the property is in a title, cannot be go back to the Hedo. That's what we were told too by the. Uh, it cannot. No. What Thank probably you. happened is they never put it in a title. Yeah. Thank you. Because uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why we turned it down. <laughs> Thank you, Manny. Thank you. Uh, we bought a house five years ago in an Ejido, and we have one piece of paper showing we did that. What, what is my exposure to risk? What kind of uh, paper is that shows that you own that? It's from the Ejido. It uh, has the signatures of all the officers. It shows how much I paid and who I paid it to. All right. Let me try to explain uh, that because I got a, a, quite a bunch of people that is telling me that. The problem is the people in the Hedo, they don't know the law. And they are putting the properties, the Hedo properties, into the foreign name. But if you go up in a court, in a case, in a court, you have nothing because the, the Constitution said that you cannot own it. So that's just wrong. It's illegal. The, the Hedos put foreign names on the document. That you can call certificate or you can call Constancia or, or whatever name you can give it to them. It, it's not right. My suggestion to all people that has been approaching to me and with the same case, I tell them immediately go to the Hedo, change it to a Mexican name, and that Mexican can give you the power to be using that. Is legal? No, it's illegal. The right way to own a Hedo land is through a corporation, a Mexican corporation. That's what the Constitution in the Article 27 says. Only Mexican or uh, naturalized people or Mexican corporations can own land or properties into the restricted zone. Okay, thanks. So if your name is in that, in that document, my advice is go and switch it to a Mexican name. Okay. 
if it's in a heater. You don't need a Mexican name, you mean a Mexican person? Can be the person that you trust. Thanks. But, but, that is not enough, okay? My suggestion is, I, I, I do not advise that go for the Mexican name. Uh, my advice is go for a corporation, because that way you have control. See, you own the corporation, the corporation owns the property. A Mexican corporation. But if in the case that you decide to keep it in a Mexican name, what you have to do to protect yourself is have three documents from the, the person, the Mexican person. The first one is the power of attorney. So you can do whatever you want in the property, including the sale. The second one is a lease agreement for 99 years with the option to buy. And the third one is a letter that states that the funds used to buy the property comes from you. And all the, those three documents uh, is, must be notarized. Good, thanks. You're welcome. So you can see from Manny's answer, it's quite a complicated process. So I think for a question like that, it would be good to have a one-on-one -on -one with Manny. Absolutely. To describe it. I, I just think it, it's uh, important, I don't want to take business away from you in this area, but to let the people understand that there are four areas in the coast of Mexico, the total, uh, the Gulf, and the, the Pacific coast, that, that within the 60 kilometer regions, the towns are, we are allowed to own. And there's one is north, uh, I knew all four before, but I can't remember them now. But they, you, can, you can find out, the Mexican consul will tell you where it is. Uh, there's one north of uh, Port of Verde, up, oh, what's the city called up there? No, up north, quite a ways north, uh, a few towns north of, of, uh, of, of Lucerius. And uh, that, that area, that whole town, and, and a, a fairly large area around it, you and I can own. I mean, I can own. Uh, we'll be, a foreigner can own. I will, I will be more than happy to to see the support. That yeah. Well, I, I got it. The, the, the Mexican council, uh, consulate in Toronto called me and laid out each one of them a number of years ago when I was thinking about buying. I'm now a permanent resident and I can buy, but then I wasn't. And uh, they told me that, uh, they, they told me the four I could go clearly buy uh, from, and that was it. And all right. See, th this, this is one of the problems that we have right here in Mexico. The communication, it's, uh, you hear some advice from one side, you just hear another advice from the other side. But if you go to the Constitution, which is the maximum law here in Mexico, you will find out that it's not possible. I mean, I respect what the embassy says to you, but unfortunately, like in here, the heroes, many of the heroes, they don't know. An embassy in other country, they have certain authority and they have certain knowledge about, but they're not the experts. But I wasn't talking about the land. I was no, talking I, I, about I, I, the, the even the private property land of the of the country, and you can buy from it. And, yeah, it's nothing to do with the heat. It's that they, they set aside four community areas. And you buy it in there? Pardon? You buy the property there? No, I haven't. They told me very clearly there and in, in uh, Antonio and stuff. Because I, I well, I've been here 35 years. And well, I've tried I, every... I will advise that you go there and try to buy one and see how the process is. <laughs> <laughs> with, with all the respect that you deserve, of course. But if that were true, it's, it's really easy. I mean, we're really close to Nayarit. We, we are next state to Nayarit. And if that were true, we would be in the same position in here. No, it's, they're, they're very clearly defined areas, and they're not very large. Like one is that right. town up north of Puerto Verde, and I think so that's just a G or something. But I know where it is, I've been to it. And the places are safe. I yeah, will take a trip to see yeah. that. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, so, um, so I, have a, <coughs> excuse me, I have a question. Um, and if you covered this before I got here, just tell me that. But um, we own a we own some property for a trust, 
And, um, and I was wondering if it changes at all when we become permanent residents, or do you have to become a citizen before any of the rules change for trust or ownership? Well, the law is really very clear. It says Mexicans naturalizes or Mexican corporations. Doesn't say nothing about a person that has a permanent or temporary residence. It has to be Mexican or naturalized. And having your your uh, permanent resident, it changes nothing in the trust. It will change at the time that you sell the property that you have. Then you can apply for some exemptions on the taxes and the capital gain taxes. Hi, Manny. Hi. <laughs> Same. Be close. Um, I don't own property here. I did in the past, but. Um, could you cover some some of the the ramifications of people that buy and then rent? Like there there must be some people here that maybe have bought property and then they go back and they rent it out to other people, or how they get around that, or is there penalties? You mean the owners renting the yes. properties? Yeah, if they rent it out, they can maybe not be down here a lot, and they rent it out to other gringos or... Anyway, just could you cover a bit around rentals? Absolutely, Thank sure. Thank you. Um, that is a huge subject in here, because that in involves the taxes. Any person in Mexico that has an income have to pay taxes. In order to pay taxes, you need to be registered into the tax department. But as a foreign, you need to have the, the authorization of immigration to have income here in Mexico. So if you, you own a house, if you're renting that house and, have, and the income is here in Mexico, then you have to pay taxes here in Mexico. Now, there is some platforms on the internet like, like Airbnb and any other ones. They retain you the tax and they give it to the, to the government. But you need also to have the tax ID number, what we call RFC. Hi, Manny. Hi. See, told you I'm up. <laughs> um, we have done a little bit of looking recently, and as many of you might know, the um, amount of money and investments and everything that you need to even be considered to buy property in Mexico has gone way up. Like, not all of us definitely have that much, you know, base income and stuff. How would you ever even be able to afford to come now? Well, there is two different things. To buy a property, you can buy it for 100 pesos. It doesn't matter if you buy it for 100 pesos or for 100 millions. It doesn't matter the amount. What it, it matters is the, the money, the, in, the income that you needed is to become a permanent resident. The immigration will require you to have some income or to have some certain amount of money in the bank in order to give you the, the permanent resident part. Yeah. So this is some different things. Different. To buy a property, it doesn't matter the amount. A realtor needs to be licensed in Mexico. Uh, there is ten states in Mexico that they have real estate uh, law. In those states, they require a realtor to be licensed from from the state. Jalisco and Colima are one of those that we don't have yet the, the realtors law, the real estate law. So as soon as the law passes and, and forces it to the people, to the realtors who works in real estate, to have license, we will have to have it. But right now, Jalisco and Colima, they don't require it. We ask you to come over to the microphone so that everybody can hear the question. It's just a little easier. Or, or, I can give or, or, or walk mic. over, walk over to the microphone if you don't mind, just to make it easy for everybody to hear. So, what's the possibility that you could have a 
closer to your uh, an American corporation or a Canadian corporation and then purchase. Would there be any benefit with that or is it just a Mexican corporation? Well, as a foreign corporation, you can buy a land in here, of course, but that's not give you the right that the Mexican corporation give you. If you want to own the, the property, it has to be a Mexican corporation. And that's what it says in the file. Mexicans naturalize it. Or Mexican corporations is the one who are allowed to, to own the land and the restricted zone. Okay. Get a Mexican trust or corporation. There is uh, different things. Uh, having a Mexican corporation, you need to go with a notary. The notary will create the corporation. The notary will do all the registration in the corporation, which are uh, one of those are in the government, the secretary of the government in Mexico. The other one is uh, the foreign investment in Mexico and they will uh, register into the tax department also the corporation because the corporation has to pay taxes as well. This is the process for a uh, corporation. A trust, you go with the notary again, and the notary will do all the process to hire a bank which will own the property and the bank will give you the price of the property to you directly. So that's the bank trust. Manny, I have a question. Why does it take months and months and months to complete on a house if you were to buy, let's say, title property and you get a title from a, a bank through the notary in, in Canada, United States, you, you set a closing date, two days, you set a date and two days later you're the owner. Why does it take six months here or seven months or whatever the case? I hear a lot of horror stories about people waiting forever for it to close, to close and complete. Well, back in the past, uh, telling about probably eight or ten years ago, it was more easy than now. You you can have your title or your bank trust uh, done in a couple of months. That was the normal two, maximum three months. But now, due to the COVID regulations and and how busy the the country is, it takes three to six months get down the, the trust. And this is because the notary has to wait for the bank to do the authorization of the trust. And after that, they have to go with the government, the Mexican government, the, the secretary of the government, to have another authorization from them. And because they, they are doing everything with an appointment, and the appointments are, if you try to make an appointment in, this, in the tax department, you can have it today or you can have it next year. So it takes a long time now to do the, the process. But it's, it's getting normal to have to wait three to six months to get done. Uh, so another question. So as far as the title, um, for this area of Jalisco where we are located, is Awadlan the location where all the documentation is kept, filed for every property that's sold in this area? Is it Awadlan? It is. It is, Outland has the office from, from uh, the government that do the registration in all properties. To follow up what I asked earlier, a Mexican corporation can own property. Can a foreign national like me own a Mexican corporation? Uh, I'm sorry, ask again. Can the Mexican corporation be owned by a non-citizen of Mexico. Yes. yes so that's my loophole. I just go make a corporation and Absolutely. buy my property. If you are buying an Ejido property, because if you buy a title property, the cheapest, the fastest, and the best way to go is a bank trust. Because if you create a corporation, the corporation has to be registered into the tax department. You have to be presenting statements of, of the taxes, even if you don't have any income at zero, and you have to do the statements every month and sure. every year. So you have to pay an account. And you have to pay a, a, a fee every year also to the government for, the, for any investments in Mexico. So this is more expensive to create in a corporation. If, you, if it's a title property, I would say go for the trust. 
And did a Hedo property, can it be in a bank trust? No. No, for its nature, no. Because an Hedo property cannot be seized. Nobody can take it away from you. I see. Thanks. Well, this is one of the uh, the mistakes that most of the people does. And a hidden property cannot be sell. You can transfer the price of the possession. Yes. See, this is one of again one of the biggest mistakes when the people buy an a hidden property. They make an agreement, say, "Oh, we have an agreement," but they have a, a buy and sell agreement, which is illegal yes. because the law, uh, the hidden law in Mexico, say that land cannot be buy or sell. Right. You transfer the price of the possession. So if someone transferred it to a foreigner like me, which I think they did because we got a letter from the president at that time of the country saying thank you for buying the Ejido land from Calderon when he was president. He sent us a letter. We have it. Wow. Because, because the, it was transferred to us. And we think it was legal because it went through a notary. And it went through Outland. And then it went to the... Um, Let's see. It, it, so Even a hedo or a private property can go to a notary if it's your, your choice. But I never heard that the president sent a letter to <laughs> someone to buy an hedo property because they tried to get rid of the hedos. Right, with that he wanted that land. <laughs> I don't know. I have it. Maybe. And this is an hedo property? It, it was. It, it was. It, now it's um, private. It has title. We have the title with the bank. Yeah. And, and, the, and it was all through a notary. I hope it's legal. I, si. I will sell it to a Mexican if I have to. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned about you mentioned about buying through a bank trust, but can you also use a trust in home? You can, but it's not legal. Not legal. Okay. Thank you. It's not contemplated in the law. <clears throat> I have a question. What percentage does the real estate agent charge? There is no rule. <laughs> they can charge you 1%, they can charge you 10% or 20%. Uh, all the years that I have been working in here, once I establish my percentages, the one that I charge to anyone, it doesn't matter. If if it's a, in a small uh, lot or it's a mansion, I'll charge the same percentage to everybody. So there's no set rule? No rule because, because, because we don't have a real estate law yet in Jalisco. Okay. Once the law passes and enforces it in, in the state, the law will say which percentage we have to use. Okay. And what about a person that buys that is not Mexican, and they are told they have to pay a president hombre? Is that the norm? No. <laughs> Using a president hombre is not the right way to do it. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Manny. Hi. Hey, I just have a question. You just mentioned that president hombre is not legal, or it's not legally binding. Is that what you mean? Yes. It's not legally binding. So my question is, why did we pay a notary? Isn't a notary supposed to advise you of that? Well, the thing, it, there's two different things. You can use the notary to certify the acquisition of the price of the possession in a Nehiro land, which is one thing. The notary will say, uh, okay, this person's present to me, and they want me to certify the agreement that, or the certificate that they have. This is one thing. But the illegal part comes uh, because using a Mexican name, you are shaving taxes. You are not following what the Article 27 says that you should do. So that's the part illegal. There is no such law that says, oh, you cannot use a, a personal number. You cannot use a land name, a Mexican person name to hold the title or, or the a hero document. But because that is not included in, in the Constitution or any other law that makes it 
out of the legal frame. So you mentioned that the the law today is that uh, if you open up a Mexican corporation, then you can purchase with a lot less stress. How long has that rule been in place? And from your knowledge uh, and experience, what's the possibility that the law could be changed in two, three, four years? Well, in order to change, they have to do the authorization to modify the constitution, which is going to be hard. You know, yeah, it's going to take, I don't know what, what needs to be done, but they have tried. They have been trying to change the Article 27, to modify Article 7 to the Foreign People's Council and only directly here has not been successful for three times already. So, I, I can tell you, it's going to be for, probably forever. <laughs> I'm sorry, Manny, I'm just, I'm a little confused because even though we do have a president in Hungary, we also do pay taxes, right? We pay municipal and we pay ejido taxes. Under whose name you're paying? Uh, under his name. But so he's, he's a contributor then? We're responsible for the taxes. Yeah, you, the money is from you. Yes. But the taxes are being paid for and his name. So he's the owner. Yeah. He's the holder? Yes. He you, gives us permission as the first day in Hungary to do the improvements. Yes, yes that's not the uh, uh, normal practice in, in this area, to using a, a Mexican name. It's not normal? It's normal. Oh, thank you. A lot of people <laughs> does. If you ask me, is the best way to do it? No. Let me, tell, let me ask you something. What happened when uh, your president number passed away? Well, I think part of that was the will. We also drew up a will at the time. Well, being an Ejido land, the principal beneficiaries are the, if it's a man, the wife, and the kids. Right. How you can claim a will of the price of the property when that automatically, by the nature of the land, goes to the beneficiaries. Right. So you have now a problem. You have to change the will from the people that you were using. Now you have to have a, another will from the people that, who was the beneficiaries of the land. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's... And it's a never-ending story. <laughs> These are good questions, so can we come on, please? My question is, if you have a present ombre, do they have the right to hoof you out of the house? Yes. <laughs> if they want it. And if they have the way to do it. That's why, I'm, see, I'm not saying that is the worst thing that you can do using a, a Mexican name on, on an ejido. Okay? As I said before, you need protection. And those three documents that I tell you will protect you. If you have the power of attorney, you have the lease agreement, if you have the letter statement that the funds use it for to buy the property, then you're protected. Manny, could you repeat that? So if you uh, have a property, like Sandy was saying, and you have a presto nombre, and um, what you're saying, these three documents, can you repeat that? So you, so, so you have a presto nombre who is named in the constancia for the property, and then you need, first document is what? The first document says a power of attorney. Power of attorney right. giving, giving you full power to do, to sell the property, whatever. do whatever. Yeah, a, a general power of attorney. Which and allows the person you to nobody do has signed that, assigned it to you, so now you have the power of attorney, and you can do whatever you want with that property. Yes. Supersede what he has. Yes. What's the second document? The second is a lease agreement. So that protects you that they will 
not be allowed to introduce any other people into the property. Right, so then the lease agreement would state that you, for 99 years, have a lease agreement with the Preston Nobles as the owner, but you're the leasee, but you have it for 99 years, correct? You get the right to the right. possession what, for 99 what's the third? years. And what's the third? The third one says a letter from the Preston Nobles that the states, the funds used to buy the property comes from the original person who, who wants to be owned. One important thing, in, in the lease agreement, you need to include two clauses, two special clauses. The first one is uh, the agreement, the lease agreement has the option to buy for 100 pesos, whenever you like. If in five years you become a Mexican uh, citizen, naturalize it, then you switch it, that property to your name, paying nothing. And the second class is a heresy class. If the person number pass away, the, the rest of the family or the beneficiaries of, of the person, they will honor the agreement that you have with that person. Uh, is there such a thing, I'm asking too many questions here, but is there such a thing as a template, a boilerplate, showing all these agreements? So the, the first one, second one, third one, are you just fill in the blanks? Is there such a thing that Realtors have here, or notaries have here, or lawyers have here, to be able to for a person that is not familiar with the real estate rules of Mexico. I know to be able to complete no. it easily. No, no. If you go with a notary and tell him that you are going to have the person number, all that he will do is certify that you what you're doing. But they will not tell you what you need to be protected. And that's just the mistake that uh, most of the builders are doing. Would it make sense to have a bank trust? Would that be the safest for somebody who's buying? If it's a, a title property, yes. Back in the time, the, the power of attorney was forever until the grant uh, uh, canceled it or died. But uh, the law changed about eight, nine years ago, and now the power of attorney lasts only five years. Every five years has to be renewed. Wonder, nobody has been asking about taxes. <laughs> okay, I'm never buying a property in Mexico. Manny, I have a question about rentals. Um, I'm just curious about practices about renting and deposits, and if things aren't satisfactory when you arrive, your return of deposits. Because I have a lot of friends that find them in situations where the property doesn't meet their expectations and they want to bow out. Sometimes they're asked to pay six months in advance, the full, they're like, there's all kinds of things out there. Can you speak to any of the rental? Are there any guidelines or rules um, concerning rental properties? Sure. Of course, we have uh, uh, the civil code with rules of the matter, uh, talking about the rentals. The civil code it rules everything in, in the state. But I'm talking about the rentals. Um, that is limitations on, on the rentals. But there is no such a rule to say uh, you cannot ask if you own the, the property you're renting. There is no rule that says that you cannot ask for six months or for one month or for deposit or for another deposit. All this is going to be as you place it in the agreement that you have it with them. Because it has to be a, a rental agreement between them. I'm, I'm wondering what recourse there is if you put a deposit down on a hotel room and you're promised number five and you get here and they say to me, you, no, you can't have number five, you've got number 20, which is in the back of the hotel versus the ocean view. 
what kind of recourse might we have? Manny, if we can just remind people to keep the mic really close to your lips, otherwise we're getting buzzing through the through the ears. Okay. Well, a little bit is not rules either. <laughs> All that it happens is that hotel will lose business. But uh, you can enforce them to honor the agreement. Yes, if you take them to court. But it's going to be more expensive for you. You will waste time and money and effort. It's going to be not worth it. You better change the hotel. <laughs> so I know you're moving into the taxes, and I really appreciate that. Um, up in Canada, you're paying 38 to 50 percent taxes, so you make two dollars, and one dollar goes to the fine government that do a fine job. Is that fair? Really? Are you at 50? Manny, could you walk over to the microphone and answer that question? Because we didn't hear it. We're going to do a duet. <laughs> yeah, she's saying that uh, they pay about 40, 50 percent taxes in their country. But well, we do it here too. If you pay the whole taxes that the government requires, you will be paying 42, 45 percent too. Wow. On the income. <laughs> well, it sounds pretty good. What did you pay last year? <laughs> you don't want to know. Uh, yeah, well, taxes and above uh, real estate is different, okay? If you have an income, there is a procedure depending on which regiment you are tributating to the tax department. In real estate, the, ink, the taxes are uh, estimated on the profit that you make. If you buy a house for 100 pesos, $100, and sell it for 150, then you get a capital gain of 50. So that's the taxable part. Apply some uh, exemptions if you are a permanent resident or Mexican, or reduction on the taxes, every case is different. and has to be uh, estimated individually. I cannot say that everything is, that everybody is, is the same. But what can I tell you is, capital gain taxes goes from 1.96 to 35%. Wow. <clears throat> Instead of selling the property, you actually transfer your shares of your corporation. Uh, usually you're exempt from capital gains at that point. Is that options here in Mexico? Well, if you are part of corporation, if you had shares in a corporation, at the time that you transfer the rights, you make money. So you have to pay taxes. As an individual, not, not as a corporation, but as an individual. If you are getting out of the corporation, you have your share, which at the end is going to be pesos or dollars, and then it's the tax department considered as an income. And as I said, every case is different. Probably you will uh, have the chance to apply for some reductions or, or having some uh, uh, benefits on the taxes. Trust, you need to go with a notary. You can go with it, doesn't need to be the same notary that you use because uh, everybody knows that. Well, whoever knows that the notary is what land Lomeli, you know, he must away, so don't try to go with him. Okay? <laughs> so you can go with any notary and ask them to do their, their renew. And they still, well, you have to check your, your trust. Maybe the trust and the time that you made it, it was for a longer time. Because back in the past, we, we can have trust for 99 years, then they cut it to 50. So you need to check your trust. It says the expiration in there. If, um, this is about a um, trust as well. If we have a beneficiary in our trust, um, 
and we pass away and, and the beneficiary inherits the she inherits the trust. Is that right? And is there anything else that has to happen? Do you need a will? Do you need uh, new a new trust to be created or can it just be inherited that way? And is there a tax at that point? Well, if the trust has the beneficiary, you don't need a will because the, the, the beneficiary has the, the price of the will. What you have to do, I mean, if you pass away and the beneficiaries are taking over, they have to come with an orderly and ask them to take your name of the, of the trust and just leave it them or, or whoever it is. So, Manny, if you are a permanent resident and you sell your home, what is the exemption? For the person named on the uh, or the owner of the uh, the home on the title, we have a measure uh, in Mexico that we call UDIS UDI, which uh, it makes about 4.5 million pesos exemption if it's your house in the past three years. So if you sell it for more than 4.5 millions, then the exemption will apply for the first 4.5 millions, and the rest is the one is going to be taxed. But if you were to sell that while you a temporary resident, then you will be paying taxes on the capital gains. If you're a temporary you, resident, not as a, a temporary term. resident, you can apply for the exemptions or the reduction of the taxes. You cannot if you don't have a permanent resident card. But as a permanent resident, you can claim. They give you legally all the price of the possession. Right. It's like you own it. Right, but still, the bank is on that title somewhere. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right, so they still hold the title to the claim. It's more like a, like a S. So, so when you become a, when you become a citizen, even if it's still in a bank trust, they're still on the title. If you become a citizen, you don't need a trust. You just switch the, the trust in your name. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So you're becoming a citizen. So you're having You don't dual, need a trust. Okay. So you're, what you're doing is you're having dual citizens between Mexico and the United States. This when you say it, become, it makes when, no sense if, if you are from the states, Canada, or Europe. Right. But when you say I become a citizen, does that mean that I now have a Mexican passport? Mexican I, naturalization. Okay. So when you say naturalization, that means that I am now a citizen of Mexico. Yes. Yeah. Mexican okay. citizen. I just wanted to get because you know I didn't sure. know if you meant absolutely whatever. So you could get a if you got a naturalize if you got a if you became a citizen of Mexico. Mm -hmm. You would still need a uh, corporation. No, it can be on your name directly. Okay, so then you don't—you just become a Mexican citizen, and you forget about all the problems. <laughs> yeah. so and the fees. Okay. And how long does it take to become so a Mexican citizen? Let's go, everybody, citizen? to be a Mexican citizen. I'm sorry. Sir. So how long does it take to become a Mexican citizen? Well, there is rules. Uh, right now, you need to be first a uh, permanent resident for five years, and after five years, you can apply for the okay, naturalization. So, so unless you are a permanent resident, you, you're going you're gonna to want to go through a corporation, and then you could start your Mexican citizenship at that point in time, and when you yes. get the five years, it's a part. Yes. <laughs> So, Manny, um, we have friends that just sold um, in Costa Comantes, which is where we are. And because it's a heat of land over there, I understand that the taxing system after you sell or transfer, right? Because you can't sell it, you can transfer it. Um, that the taxes that you pay are very different than somebody who's purchased a title of land. Yes and no. If you use a notary, the notary have the obligation, it's enforced by the law to let them know the tax department that you, what you're doing. But if you don't use a notary, which you don't need it for a hero land, 
then if you do not receive the funds in Mexico, you pay no taxes. That's what I thought. Whatever is going to happen in your country when you're receiving the funds, if they tax you, that's different. Yeah. Okay. Thank but as far as uh, it's not notarized the deal, there is no taxes. So, so, so I'm wondering how it becomes title plan if much of the land has been given as a Edo group, group land and individual within the groups, I think. How do you become titled? I mean, even a Mexican citizen, how, there are people with title places, right? right. Yes. See, the, the Hedo, it will become a private property property uh, with the time. How long? We don't know because it depends on each Hedo. Each Hedo is independent. They decide if they go to the legalization plan or not. So most of the Hedo in this area are in the legalization uh, process, like a Villa Bregon, they legalize. Haluco, legalize. Uh, Barra de Navidad, legalize. The ones who are not legalizing right now is Emiliano Zapata, which belongs to Costa Comate in the west area of Milwaukee, and San Patricio, which is in the middle. But as, as soon as the Hedos uh, make the authorization for the legalization, then you will have a title. Any other questions? Good questions. For clarity, which governmental unit issues titles for land? State or federal? Federal. It is, and uh, the Spanish says the uh, R-A-N, which is the agrarian nuclear of uh, land in Mexico, is the one who provides the titles. So the right to titles will not <coughs> vary from state to state? Uh, they are federal, so in every state is the same. Appreciate One thing that you, you need to contemplate, when it's an Ejido property, the first, uh, not the first one, the second document that you will have is a title, but the title but caps only the land, not the construction. If you have an Ejido property and have the title, you need to add to that title the construction. Does that make sense? Oh, could you repeat that? <laughs> sure. You have an Ejido property that becomes uh, private. You have a title. The title that you will have is just for the land. So you go with the notary and add the construction. Do you have if there's any construction in, in the land? So it is complete. See, this is something very, very important because at the time that you will find some uh, properties with the construction and they have title, but the title it's only for the land. So at the time that you go with the notary, they, there is nothing wrong with it. You go with the notary, and the notary will make the transfer of the rights through a bank trust, but the value of the trust is going to be for the title. At the time that you sell the property, you will have problems with taxes because the value is going to be really low and the capital gain is going to be huge. So that's interesting. So you bought a lot for $20,000 and then you put a $400,000 home on it and you've got a title for the $20,000 lot with the bank and you've held it for five years. At year six, you sell your property. And then what happens? It happens that you will have a, a huge capital gain and you will pay 35% of the taxes. So the, the, to solve the problem, go with the notary with the title and ask them to add the construction value to the trust or the title, whatever it is. Well, this was a very informative uh, session, and I could see people's eyebrows going going higher and higher. And I hope there were only good surprises because now you're maybe forewarned and have a course of action and 
and um, a lot of the things that were brought up are things you probably want to pursue on an individual basis, I think with Manny, just to clarify. The video will be available in a short while, so you can review some of the some of the topics. There was a lot of information given. I must say, Manny, I really appreciated your de delivery style. You didn't hold back anything, um, and so thank you very much to Manny Inda. Marilee, can you announce what the topic is and the presenter who that will be for the next session? Please? Oh, if only I knew. Uh, uh, yes, I'm not presenting or introducing them. Does someone have it handy from the church? I know that, um, let's see, it will be next Thursday, which is the 2nd of February. And let's see, what could it be? Could it be about things that you can eat and not eat? Uh, what? So it's about plants and animals, things you should be aware of relating to uh, plants and animals, edible things. And uh, I believe that Lionel from the gallery restaurant is going to be the presenter for that evening. And maybe he'll even bring along some, some samples. And it will be, I think, a really, really informative evening as well. And maybe not like, like not so serious, but maybe it could be life-threatening. I don't know. It's important. Anyway, please share the information. I think they're going to make an effort to disseminate to more people, but please share it among your friends who might have an interest in attending any of these events. And they don't have to be regular regular attendees at the church. So, <coughs> oh good, my memory's not gone yet. Plants and animals you can or cannot get along with. Oh, that's nicely said. Yes. And the following week is going to be the ninth, the safety and scams, and the list is on the website as 